Lesson 107, Construction. In this last section of the book, we're going to go over a few topics that we didn't have room for in the main part of the book. And you may remember from the very first chapter, we talked about the Greeks, and they were the first people to make geometry logical by using deductive reasoning. And they approached geometry differently from the Babylonians and the Egyptians. The Babylonians and Egyptians were interested in practical measurements, but the Greeks were philosophers in search of truth. Even though they were wanting to find truth, the Greeks were still practical enough to realize that geometry proofs, at least most of them, require diagrams. And in producing their diagrams, the Greeks had the unusual practice of only using two tools. They only used two things to draw their diagrams. They used a straight edge and a compass. Now, a straight edge is just a ruler that doesn't have any marks on it. No marks showing inches or centimeters or some other unit. It's just nothing more than a straight edge that you could use to draw a line. And then a compass is a tool that's used to draw circles. And a compass has a pencil on one end and a metal point on the other. And you've probably used compasses before, but let me show you a picture. See, here's the metal point of the compass, and then here is the pencil, and then you can adjust the distance between these two. The pencil will slide back and forth so that you can make this distance wider or narrower, whatever is necessary to draw a circle of a certain size. If you don't already have one, it's really helpful to get a compass for the next few lessons. A straight edge and a compass were the only tools that the Greeks used to do their geometry diagrams. And at first it may seem kind of odd that they refused to allow markings on their rulers. Why not put marks on the rulers? But the reason was that they saw the straight edge and compass as being representatives of a line and a circle. A straight edge represented a line, and then a compass represented a circle, since you could use a compass to draw a circle. And then a line and a circle... Those are the basic building blocks of all geometric figures. That's the way the Greeks thought of it. So by using only a straight edge and a compass in drawing their diagrams, that was the Greeks' way of keeping their mathematics as simple and logical as possible. And then Greeks also believed a little bit later after they'd gotten into studying geometry logically with deductive reasoning, they came to believe that geometry was actually more reliable than arithmetic. It was more reliable to use figures like lines and circles than it was to use numbers. And so another advantage of straight edge and compass is that those don't involve numbers at all. Think about it. A straight edge doesn't have inches or centimeters or anything on them, so that means there are no numbers on a straight edge. But a ruler does have numbers. It has one inch, two inch, three inch, or whatever units the ruler is marked with. And then a compass doesn't have any numbers on it either, but then something like a protractor does. And so that was another reason that the Greeks wanted to just stick with straight edge and compass when they were producing their diagrams. Now, a diagram drawn with only a straight edge and compass is technically called a construction. And that's why that's the name of this lesson. And that's why there's a difference between drawing a diagram. If you draw a diagram, like you've been drawing diagrams throughout this book, you can use any tools that you want, whatever you have available, just anything that makes it easy to draw the diagram. There's a difference between doing that, drawing something, and constructing a diagram. If you construct a geometric diagram, that means you're only using straight edge and compass. And then even though the Greeks started this whole thing with straight edge and compass a long time ago, this practice of constructing diagrams with only a straight edge and compass has been continued throughout the centuries. And even today, most geometry courses do require you to construct learn how to construct a few simple geometric figures just to gain a little bit of understanding of the methods that the Greeks used. And that's why for the next couple of lessons, for this lesson and the next one, we're going to learn how to construct some geometric figures, and we're only going to use a straight edge and compass. Now, you don't have to run all over town trying to find a ruler that doesn't have any markings on it. You can use a regular ruler, but just don't pay any attention to the markings. That's all you have to do to turn it into a straight edge. That's good enough for our purposes. Now, we're going to start by learning to construct the simplest geometric figure of all, which is a line segment. To construct a line segment, what we do is we use a compass to copy another line segment. That's the way it works. 
Now, you may wonder, why are we copying another line segment? Well, remember, the idea is we want to produce a line segment of a certain length, but then we don't want to use the markings on a ruler. See, the most obvious way to produce a line segment of a certain length, let me put a segment up. See, if we wanted to produce a segment of the same length as this line segment AB, the most obvious way to do it would be to measure the length of this segment and then you could draw one that's the same length using the ruler. But that's not allowed according to the Greek's method because, see, you're relying on numbers. And so what we're going to do is instead use a compass and just use that to measure the length of this. We're not going to measure it with numbers, though. We're just going to put the metal point of the compass here and then the pencil point over here, and then we'll be able to draw or construct, that's the technical term, another line segment that's the same length as this one. So the first step is to adjust the compass so that the metal end and the pencil end are just far enough apart so that each fits on the end points of line segment AB. See, here's the metal point, and then here's the pencil point, and you know the compass can be adjusted like that. And then the distance between the two ends of a compass is actually called the radius of the compass, and the reason is because you could use the compass to draw a circle, and then if you had it set this way, this length would be the radius of that circle. But now that you've got the compass legs set to the same length as this line segment, the next step is to draw a line and mark a point on it. We're going to just draw a line separately. See, here's the line, and then we're going to mark point C on that line. And then using the compass, we draw a small arc that intersects the line segment. We put the metal point of the compass on point C. Right here, you see that. And then we're going to just move the compass around sort of swing it around like this, and then with the pencil we're going to make a little arc on the line that intersects the line, and then the place where the arc and the line intersect we'll call that point D. And what we've just done is to create a new line segment, CD, which is congruent to AB. See, because we didn't change the spacing of our compass, the metal point and the pencil point were just as far apart as they were whenever we measured the original line segment AB, and so CD and AB are congruent. And we've just constructed a line segment of a certain length, and we didn't have to use a ruler with marks on it to do it. And that's the way you construct a line segment. And that was easy enough, but then you would expect constructing line segment not to be that hard. Now let's learn how to construct another basic building block of geometry, which is an angle. And then again, here the most obvious way to draw an angle would be to use a protractor. That's kind of like using a ruler to draw a line segment of a certain length. If you wanted to produce an angle of a certain measure, then you would think that you would want to use a protractor. But then if we're going to follow the Greek method and construct the angle, we're not allowed to use a protractor. We need to just use straight edge and compass. But we're still going to copy an angle of a certain measure and produce one that's has the same measure but without using that protractor. And what we'll do is we'll call the original angle, the angle that we're copying, angle A. And the first step of the construction process is to put the metal point of the compass on the vertex and then by just swinging the compass around like this and letting the pencil drag on the paper, we've drawn an arc that intersects both rays of the angle, both sides of the angle. It intersects this side at point D and then this side at point E. Now the next step is to draw another ray. And we'll call that ray BC. And of course we use the straight edge to draw that and we don't need to pay any attention to any markings on a ruler. We just need a straight edge. And this ray is going to be one of the sides of the new angle that we're constructing which is going to be congruent to angle A. And then the third step is to put the metal tip of the compass on point B. And we don't want to change the distance between the metal point and the pencil here. We don't want to change that from what it was before whenever we drew the arc that went through both sides of angle A. And then we put the metal point here and then we draw an arc here that intersects this ray BC. And then I've got the intersection point of the arc and the ray at point F. Now the next step is to go back to angle A and then we use the compass, we adjust the compass legs now so the, the distance between the metal point and the pencil equals the length of this line segment right here, DE. Imagine a line segment between these two points. We want the distance between the metal point and the pencil of the compass to be adjusted to that length. That's the next step. You see, it's a little bit more complicated to construct an angle than it is a line segment. We're not quite done. Now we take the compass 
and the space here between the metal point and the pencil has been adjusted so that it's the same length as DE. Remember segment DE. So we take the compass and we go back to the ray here. It was called ray BC, but then this arc was drawn to intersect the ray. And then we take our compass and we put the metal point on point F. We don't change the distance between these two. And then we draw another arc that intersects the first arc. See here this arc is intersecting the first one at point G. We'll just name that point G. And then the final step is to use a straight edge to draw another ray through point B, which is going to be the vertex of the new angle, right through G. And then this angle, B, is congruent to the original angle, A. So we just constructed an angle of a certain measure. And so that's the way you construct an angle. Now let me quickly go through the steps for constructing a line segment, and then I'll go through the steps for constructing an angle, just as a summary so you have those. To construct a line segment, the first step is we're given line segment AB and we're going to construct a segment. And what we do in the first step is to adjust the compass to the length of AB. You just put the metal point on one end point of the segment and the pencil on the other end. And then step two is to draw a line and mark a point on that line. We'll call it point C. And then step three is put the metal point of the compass on point C and then draw an arc that intersects the line and then make the intersection point, we'll call that D. It doesn't really matter, obviously, what letters you use, but we'll just say it's point D. And then that means that segment CD, which you've just drawn, is equal to the original segment AB. And here are the steps to construct an angle. Step one is we start with angle A. We're going to construct an angle that's congruent to angle A. We put the metal point of the compass on the vertex of angle A. Then we draw an arc through the angle sides at points D and E. That's where the arc intersects the two sides of the angle. Then the next step is to draw a ray, BC, and this is going to be one of the sides of the new angle that we're constructing. And we put a metal point on point B and draw an arc through that ray, and we call that intersection point F. And then step three is we use the compass to measure DE. That's back here with angle A. See the arc intersected the angle's sides at points D and E, so we measure that distance between those points. And then step four is we put the metal point of the compass on point F and draw another arc that intersects the first one at point G. And then the final step is we draw another ray through points B and G, and then that becomes the second side of the new angle that we just constructed, which is congruent to angle A.